Hello and welcome, this is Jenna from McGuire and I'm so glad you're here. Today I have two techniques to share with you. The first is a technique that allows you to create backgrounds very quickly with lots of shine and lots of texture. I will also be sharing a technique of partial die cutting, mostly with word dies, but I will talk about other dies you can use. Before we get started, I did want to mention that I recently had shoulder surgery. So you'll see I have a sling on and I kind of struggle my way through parts of it. However, my doctor said I could create as long as I wore the sling and took certain precautions. Uh, it's good to actually move the arm and that's what I'm doing today. So this took me a few days to do. I'm a little bit slower and not as um, with it as I normally am with creating, but I still hope that you enjoy the techniques I have to offer. Okay, let's get started. I have a lot to share. For all of my cards, I will be using a 3D embossing folder. The first embossing folder I'm using is the Simon Says Stamp Oak Leaves and Branches embossing folder. It actually comes with that little die set also, so you can cut out parts of it. And I'll show you that in a bit. Now in my embossing folder, I have a piece of Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper, and I'm running it through my die cut machine. Now I recommend for this technique using watercolor paper. Don't worry if you don't have watercolor paper, I will show you later how this technique works with regular cardstock. And look at that beautiful result this gives. I did mist both sides of the watercolor paper with water first, just to get a deeper impression. I do feel that makes a bit of difference. By the way, I will be using 3D embossing folders today, but you could do this technique with traditional embossing folders too. Now to create my quick shimmery and colorful background, I am using Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stain Sprays. I highly recommend this product. It gives amazing shimmer, beautiful color, and really is a great way to create fast backgrounds. Now here I'm spraying three different colors on the background. I have this little container that I do my spraying in. Now a little goes a long way with these. You can just do a couple sprays of each color and then mist it with water, which I'm about to do here. And when you mist with water, it moves that mica stain spray. Now what's special about these mica stain sprays is that the mica itself has the color, so it really will give beautiful, colorful shine. Now you could use regular sprays for this if you wanted to, and maybe you could sprinkle on some pigment powder or whatever, but this really does it all on its own. I did a few uh, sprays of the mica stain spray, a little bit of water, and then let it dry. And look at this beautiful result. Now when I do this, I kind of lose a little bit of that texture. So I want to make it stand out more. I really want that texture, the uh, acorns and leaves and such, to stand out. So I'm going to apply a pigment ink over the raised areas. I will show you other options throughout this video too. Now this is Honey Bee Metallic Gold Pigment Ink. I have a Tim Holtz Brayer that I'm picking that ink up with and I will carefully roll that over only the raised areas of my background. So I'm not putting too much pressure down, just a light roll back and forth. Now all the raised areas have additional gold metallic shine and it helps it to stand out. And by the way, I did put this on a sticky mat just to hold it in place as I applied that ink on top. And again, I'll show you other inks you can put on top and other ways to apply that ink. All right, once I'm done, I can just roll my sticky mat back and look at that. We have a beautiful background. If you want to, you can spray this with a fixative. I'll link to what uh, the fixative that I like to use in my description below, but that will make sure none of that rubs off. But really, I never have any problems with that. Before we go on to other examples of creating these shimmery textured backgrounds, let's finish this card off by doing a partial die cut sentiment. This is a great way to get a new look out of your layering word dies. So here I have two die sets. On the left we have the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Scripty Thanks die set. That's a new one. And on the right is the Scripty Hello, which has been out for a bit, but I use it a lot. I'll be using both of these today. For this card, I'll use the Scripty Thanks. I have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And towards the top, I did a pencil line at a bit of an angle. I will now take the shadow die for the word thanks, and I will line it up with that pencil line. I'll have it positioned so that the pencil line is kind of going through the bottom third of that thanks die cut. 
So you'll see that pencil line is going right across there, about a third of the way up from the bottom. And I'll put some tape there, some temporary tape to hold it in place. Now you can take whatever die cut machine you have and lay the paper and die onto your bottom cutting plate. Then you'll take your top cutting plate and put that on there offset so that it's only covering the top portion of this up to the pencil line. So the edge of that top cutting plate lines up with the pencil line that we added. So you can see the bottom of the thanks die is hanging out of the cutting plate. Only the portion of the die under the cutting plate will cut, so that's the top portion of the word thanks, and the bottom portion will not cut because it's hanging out from that top cutting plate. And now I can remove the die and you can see how only the top is cut. Next I'll use my scissors to cut from the edge of the cardstock to where the cut line stopped with my die cutting. So I have my scissors here and I'll cut from the edge to where the die cutting stopped there. So it's right about in line where that pencil line is. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So now we have this panel with the shadow of the, words thank, of the word thanks sticking out from the top. By the way, as I erase this, you see that little lovey that's in my slang. Lila made that. She crocheted it. It's a little dog named Arnold. So I'm sorry that he pops in the video here and there. Okay, so now this I originally thought would cover most of my background, but I decided I didn't want to cover a lot of that shimmery background we created because it's just too beautiful to hide. So I decided to cut at an angle using my trimmer, and this angle is the same as that angle that we just cut with our scissors. So I'm just putting it into my trimmer and cutting it about a half inch from that angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. But now we have our thanks sticking out of the top of a sentiment strip. So I can put the thanks die cut on the top portion and a stamp sentiment on the bottom. Let's do the stamp sentiment first. I'm using this new Simon Says Stamp stamp set. There is a coordinating die set available to go with it, and I will be using both the die and the stamp set later in this video. But for this card, I'm just using one of the sentiments in here that says, for your love and support. Now I have my Misty stamping tool here, and in it I have my waffle flower grip mat that will hold that white die cut piece in place as we do our stamping. I put the thanks die cut on there as a holding place and I'll line up the stamp underneath it on that long strip that we have cut. Once I have that stamp position there, I will close the door on my Misty stamping tool. I'll use my anti-static powder tool and then stamp it a few times with Versamark ink. Whenever I stamp with Versamark ink, I do like to stamp it two or three times because we're first stamping onto the anti-static powder tool, which might hinder some of that ink from remaining on the paper. So by doing it two or three times, we can be sure that we have a nice crisp Versamark clear stamped image, and then we have anti-static powder tool all around it. So we will have nice crisp heat embossing. Okay, so after I've stamped that, we will just add gold embossing powder and heat set. I thought the gold embossing powder would go nicely with the gold that we added on our textured and shimmer background. So I die cut the word thanks once from white cardstock and once from gold matte cardstock, and I'm gluing those together. That'll give us some nice dimension. Then I will add that stacked die cut onto our partial die cut border. Then we can finally add this onto our card, but I think it looks really cool if you have some dimension behind that partial die cut piece. So I have some white scraps here that I got from my scraps drawer, and I'm gluing three of those together. Now you could use a strip of foam tape here, but I figure these little strips here would have gone in the trash anyway, so I might as well use them to build dimension instead of foam tape. So I glued two together here, I'm gonna trim them, and then I'll glue another one onto that and trim it also. Then all of those stack strips will get glued behind our partial die cut border. Now for the area behind the shadow thanks, I could use foam tape or cut up foam, uh, cardstock scraps, but instead I die cut thanks three times, glued those together, and then glued that on the back. That way it would have the same raised dimension, very even, it'll hold up nicely through the mail. Now before we glue this together, I did decide to add some gold textured leaves. You can see them kind of sticking out by the S in thanks. For this, I used the same embossing folder, but I also used the dies that come with it. Using the dies, I cut from gold matte cardstock. 
I'm putting tape on the back of each of those little die cuts and lining it up in our embossing folder. You can line it up very easily looking through the folder. And you can actually put all of the die cuts in at the same time so you can add the embossing at the same time. So I ended up doing this with three leaves and three acorns. You can see these die cuts are very flat, just have that outline shape to them. But once you tape them into the embossing folder and run it through your embossing folder as you would if you were doing a background, the folder will give that texture detail to those die cuts. And when you use metallic cardstock, it really looks like a faux metallic embellishment. It's a really cool result. You could do this with regular cardstock, but man, does it look good with that metallic gold. So now I'll just take those little die cuts out. There's a closer look at the detail on the leaves and the acorns. And now those accents are ready to go too. All right, now I have a top folding white note card and I'm covering the front of it with a piece of Altenew double-sided adhesive. Whenever I want to glue a textured background onto a note card, I like to use double-sided adhesive to make sure we get a good connection. I'm putting my note card with adhesive in the corner of my stamping tool, and then I can put my background onto it, also placing it into the corner. That's an easy way to line it up. After I've got that glued together, we can add our partial die cut piece, and I have that at a little angle going along the bottom of the card. After I add this to the card, I did tuck the little metallic leaves and acorns so it looks like it's coming out from behind the word thanks. So here's a look at the completed card. We have that fun partial die cut technique that we did to the sentiment, which really changes it up. It combines that die cut thanks with the rest of the sentiment. Then for the background, we quickly made it using the Tim Holtz Mica Stain Sprays. And then we also added that gold metallic ink over the 3D embossing. So this is just a super fast way to create a card and add a little interest to it with that partial die cutting. Okay, for our next example, I'll be doing a variation of that Mica Stain Spray background. And I will also use partial die cutting to create a focal point for our sentiment strip. All right, this time I'm using a Simon Says Stamp Icy Snowflakes 3D embossing folder. This one does come with a die to cut out the snowflake that you can add texture to, but I'm just using the embossing folder alone. I have Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper. I misted it on both sides with a bit of water, put it in the embossing folder, and ran it through my die cut machine. By the way, you just need to follow the instructions that your machine comes with for using a 3D embossing folder. And look at that great texture. Now I'll put that into my spray box here and I'm spraying with three different colors of Tim Holtz Mica Stain Spray. Now you could use, as I mentioned, any sprays here. The reason I always reach for these, and I have many times in videos, is because of that mica shimmer that it has. It gives such beautiful results very quickly and with very little effort. Now I've done many technique videos using these. I'll link to a couple at the end of this video, but today I'm just putting that color down and then misting it with some water to kind of move that all that mica color together to get a shimmery watercolor background. All right, so now you can set that aside to dry or you can heat set it if you're impatient like me. Once we're done, you could see that the snowflakes kind of got lost. So what I like to do, I didn't do this on the first example, but I will do on the rest of my examples. I'm putting that dry background back into my, my, my embossing folder. It'll pop onto the raised areas in the embossing folder and it'll fit just in place. Then you can run it through your die cut machine again, and that will help to bring back some of the texture that you might have lost when you added a lot of spray and water to it. Now I let that dry again, or you could heat set it. Then this time I'm using a brayer and a dark color of ink. This is Simon's stamp dye ink in the royal color. And I'm rolling that very gently over the raised areas. This will give more definition to those snowflakes and make them stand out even more. Because I put wet ink, this wet dye ink, onto that shimmery background, I will heat set it to make sure it dries. If you want to be sure that none of it rubs off, you can always use a clear fixative spray, but I just left mine as is. Okay, we'll set that background aside. Now let's do our partial die cut snowflake where we can make our sentiment strip stand out. I have the Simon Says Stamp Willow Snowflake die set. This includes the shadow of the snowflake and then the detailed snowflake die itself. 
Off screen, I put two pencil lines on this four and a quarter by five and a half inch white background, one two inches from the top, one two inches from the bottom. I will then take the shadow snowflake die and tape it temporarily at the center of that white cardstock panel. Now let's do our partial die cutting. I'm demonstrating with my Anna Griffith Empress machine, but you could do this with whatever die cut machine you have. So I put my cardstock and the die onto the bottom cutting plate. Then I'll put the top cutting plate so it only goes up to our top pencil line. It's only covering that top portion of the die. I'll run it through our die cut machine and you'll see only the top portion of the die cut. Now I'll turn that around, put it back onto our cutting plate, and now we're cutting the other end of this white cardstock piece. Now this time I'm going to show you that you can line it up with the edge of all of your cutting plates. So look at that pencil line there, I'm lining up with the edge of all of my cutting plates. So that's just another way you can do that. Only the portion between the cutting plates will cut, anything hanging out won't. And now we have both sides or ends of that snowflake cut, but the center area is left uncut. Okay, now I will use my scissors to cut from the edge of the cardstock right along that pencil line up to where the die cutting stopped. So you can see the two cuts on this side, we'll rotate it, and then two cuts on this side. And now we have this snowflake shadow with that portion of uh, white cardstock, like a white cardstock border sticking out the left and the right. It's just a fun way to change up the look of dies you have. Could you just glue a die cut on top of a white border? For sure. But there's something really cool looking about doing partial die cutting. All right, now this piece will get glued onto our background, but let's finish everything else that goes on top of this white piece first. Off screen, I die cut the snowflake from watercolor paper, and I'm misting it with the same mica stain sprays that I used for my background so that it will match. I should have done these at the same time, the background and the snowflake, but I didn't think of it at the time, so I'm going back and doing this now. After applying all the color, you can either leave it to dry, which I do recommend doing. I feel like it blends better that way, but I'm impatient, running out of time, so I'm heat setting it with a heat gun. I then die cut an additional snowflake from white cardstock, and I'm gluing that behind our colored one, just so it has that little bit of extra dimension. You could even glue two die cuts behind it if you want it. So I glued that snowflake at the center of our partial die cut white piece. Now it's time to add that sentiment strip. I'm using a pre-printed sentiment strip from Simon Says Stamp. I cut that out and it's four and a quarter inches wide and I'm matting it with a dark navy cardstock strip. So it'll have a little bit of navy peeking out the top and the bottom. And then I will trim the excess off the edges. So again, this ends up being four and a quarter inches wide. So it spans right across our entire card. Now remember that blue snowflake there has some dimension to it because I stacked some die cuts. So I want to put some dimension to the left and the right of that snowflake where our sentiment will lay. This will just ensure that it doesn't get squished in the mail. So I have some white cardstock strips here and I'm gluing one to the left of the snowflake and to the right of the snowflake. And then I'll glue another one on top of that so I'm building up dimension. Again, you could use foam tape, but I want to use up these scraps so they don't go to waste. Now I have a nice raised area there to glue our sentiment strip. So I'm putting glue all along that straight across and we can add our sentiment on it. And now look at how that partial die cut piece really focuses in on our sentiment. Now I can put strong liquid adhesive on the back of this. I tend to put a lot on the back of this because we're gluing it onto a textured background. So I wanna make sure that it makes good contact. I'll put something heavy on that while it dries, and then I'll glue that entire background onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folded white note card. To finish it off, I did add some pink fresh glitter gems. These have a blue glitter in them, which really pulls out that colorful shimmer in the background. And when I tilt this in the light, you can see that beautiful shimmer that we got thanks to that mica stain spray background. You can see how the snowflakes stand out because we put that dark blue ink on the raised areas and how the partial die cut technique really draws your eye into that small print sentiment strip. All right, let's go on and do some more. I'm gonna do a lot more examples using this fast background technique and partial die cutting. I just feel like the more examples I show, the more confident you'll be to go try all these things with supplies you have. So I am using another 3D embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp, and again, Tim Holtz watercolor distress paper. And look at that gorgeous texture. 
By the way, you could use any watercolor paper. I will spray this with three different colors of Tim Holtz Mica Stain Spray. Now, if you don't have Mica Stain Spray, you could also do ink blending with maybe Distress Inks over the background and then spray with some water and Perfect Pearls or use some kind of clear shimmer spray. Really any technique would work here. I'm choosing to use the Mica Stain Sprays because a little goes a long way. You get beautiful colored shimmer. Okay, so I sprayed with the three colors. Now I'll spray with a little bit of water to get those colors to blend together, and I'll set it aside to dry. Once it's dry, I will put it back into the embossing folder, the same one, and run it through again just to redefine all of that texture. Now I've put it onto my sticky mat here, and I'm going to this time rub pigment ink over the raised areas. I like to take my white pigment ink pad and press it on my glass work surface, and use a brayer to pick up the ink. I then will gently roll that over the raised areas of our embossing foldered background. Now the reason I'm not taking my brayer directly to the ink pad is if there's any ink on the brayer, I don't want to contaminate my ink pad. So by putting the ink onto my glass work surface and running my brayer through that, I don't have to worry about contaminating the pad. So on our first example, we put gold metallic ink on the raised areas. On our second one, we put a color ink on top. This time we did white pigment ink. And look at how it makes that texture pattern stand out on that shimmery, colorful background. Off screen, I'll heat set that white pigment ink and you can spray it with a clear fixative if you want to. I also did a partial die cutting technique with the Scripty Hello die set. So I did this the exact same way I did the Thanks partial die cutting earlier, but instead with the Hello word. I then did Hello in black cardstock and stamped Sending You a Hug in black ink underneath it. Now for the background, I added a little gemstone at the center of each of those little flowers just to make it stand out more since this is a pretty simple card design. I will say I feel like that partial die cutting makes this simple card design stand out even more. Okay, let's do another example. This time I'm doing partial die cutting around a stamp sentiment. But first, let's do that background. It kind of has a patina look to it. I am using another new Simon Says Stamp 3D embossing folder called Carnival Petals. This does a beautiful floral image that would really work all seasons. So off screen, I use this embossing folder with watercolor paper, and now I'm adding on two different green shades to the background. Now I really wanted this to be green, you know, not like have much variation on it, so it wasn't too distracting. Do know you can make these backgrounds with just one color if you wanted, or you could do a whole rainbow. I gave that some time to dry, and now I'm putting it back into the embossing folder, popping it right onto the raised dimension. I'll run it through my die cut machine again, just to bring back even more of that texture that might have been lost when we put all that moisture on it. Now my brother comes in here to crank it for me because my shoulder's bothering me, so you'll see his hands, just in case you were wondering. All right, now onto this, I wanted to make the raised area stand out more. This time I am again using a dye ink. This is Bermuda from Hero Arts and a Brer. And I'm rolling that over the raised areas very gently. I like to do this gently so I don't touch the background. And I do it a few times in a few different directions. Now, if you used a regular 2D embossing folder, all of the raised area would catch the ink. With a 3D embossing folder, only some of the raised area, but it ends up beautiful. Because I did a green background with the teal ink on top, it's very subtle, but beautiful nonetheless. All right, now let's do our partial die cut sentiment piece. I have this great new stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. I really like the style of these greetings and that small greetings are included. And there are dies for all of the different sentiments. I chose the thanks for being kind. And I have the die for that here that I'm placing towards the bottom right of our background. But first I'll draw two pencil lines. I don't know, I didn't measure, I just eyeball here. I did one about a half inch from the edge of our white cardstock panel, and then one like an inch over from that. By the way, this panel here is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, totally eyeballing it. Now I'll take the coordinating die for our sentiment, we'll stamp it in a moment, and I'm placing it over those pencil lines. So it's hanging to the left and to the right of those pencil lines. We'll do partial die cutting on both sides. I'll place the paper and the die onto our 
bottom cutting plate and I'll put the top cutting plate only covering up to that one pencil edge there. So only part that left edge of the sentiment die will cut because it's under the cutting plate. Now I'll rotate that and do that up against the other pencil line. So only that edge there is under the cutting plate and that's the only area that will cut. So we cut the left edge of the die, the right edge of the die, and everything between the pencil lines is still connected. All right, so now I, this time, am going to use my trimmer to cut from the top of the cardstock to the top edge of that partial die cutting. Now with this trimmer, I'm just cutting it partially. I'm not pressing it all the way down, only cutting up to that die cut edge. And I'll do the same along the other pencil line. Now there are different trimmers out there. Not all trimmers work for this. You could instead use your scissors like I did before or a straight edge and a craft knife, which I'm gonna show you in my video coming out tomorrow. But all I did was cut along those pencil lines from the top of the card panel to the top edge of the die cutting on the left and the right. Then I'm gonna flip this over and do the same thing on the other edge. You could use your scissors here if you wanted to, but what I'm gonna do is take that cut edge there. See that cut edge? I'm gonna line it up with the blade of my trimmer. See, it's lined up there on the right, right along the blade of my trimmer. And then I will drop the handle of the trimmer down just a little bit so it cuts only up to that bottom cutting edge of our die cutting. And then I can do the same thing on the other pencil line. Since this is so narrow now, it's kind of hard to hold it. So I'm gonna flip it over. So I'll just flip it over, line up that partially cut edge there with the edge of my trimmer, the cutting line there. And I'll press the handle down just enough so it cuts up to that bottom die cut edge. So basically we have that partial die cut sentiment and we've cut along those pencil lines above and below. It's just a fun way to change up the final result of your stamps and coordinating dies. So now onto that, I'm lining up our stamp sentiment and I'll stamp that with uh, the Hero Arts Bermuda ink that I used before. And it was a little light, so I stamped it a few times to make my ink darker. I really like to double or triple stamp a sentiment with a stamping tool like this just to get it to a darker color. I feel like that's a great way to get more out of your lighter colored inks. All right, now I did cut a piece of mint color cardstock to be slightly wider than that white strip on the background and glued it to the back so it has a little mint sticking out on both the left and the right. I then cut four cardstock strips. You can see those strips here and I'm gluing them to the back of our partial die cut panel. This will just give it nice even raised dimension along our textured background. You could use foam tape here if you prefer. I like to use a lot of liquid adhesive on that because I'm putting it on the textured background and I'll place it on there and put something heavy on it while it dries. I then put that entire panel on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Off screen, I used the new Simons' Stamp Abundant Leaves dies. You can see that die set on the left. And I cut them from white cardstock. And I'm tucking these little leaves behind our partial die cut panel so they're peeking out, just to add some interest to it. And then I went and I put some liquid adhesive behind each of those leaves so they stay secure. So let's look at our completed card. You can see that beautiful shimmer on the background, kind of a patina look. You could add some gold embossing to that if you wanted to. And then our partial die cut sentiment. Now under that sentiment, I did stamp with a mint colored ink, hope to see you soon, from the same stamp set. And I added some glitter mint colored gemstones and some shiny mint colored gemstones, just to bring out even more that mint shine. So there you have another example, this time using partial die cutting around a stamp sentiment. Okay, let's do another example. This time I did partial die cutting to create a unique border with the sentiment attached. Just showing more examples of how to do this technique. Doing the background first, I used the new Simons' Stamp Labyrinth 3D embossing folder. I didn't think a whole lot of this embossing folder until I used it, and I will be using it a lot. It's such a cool look. I used it with watercolor paper, and now I'm putting on three different mint and blue colors of the Distress Mica Stain Spray. Again, just doing a couple spritzes of each color in two or three different spots. Once I have all that color down, I can spray with a little bit of water to blend it. 
If you want the different areas of color to stay more true and you don't want as much blending, you can skip adding the water on top. But a little goes a long way with these stain sprays. You can actually use more water and less of the stain spray and still get lots of shine. Once it's dry, I'm gonna pop it back into the 3D embossing folder. It'll fit right on the pattern, run it through the die cut machine just to add that texture back in, just to redefine the texture. You could skip that if you wanted to. And look how beautiful that background is. But I want that pattern to stand out more since this is a pretty simple card design. So I have my Brer, the Hero Arts Bermuda color, which is a dark teal, and I'll just roll that over the raised areas. So now the topmost raised area on that background will grab that dark ink, defining it even more. You can heat set it, spray it with a fixative if you want to, and you have beautiful results. So since this is a light background, that darker ink that we put on the raised area will stand out even more. And look how gorgeous that is. Now let's do our partial die cut border with the birthday wishes sentiment. I have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And I'm doing pencil line about an inch and a quarter from the right. I'll then take the shadow for this birthday wishes die set and tape it towards the bottom center of the panel. Now we'll do partial die cutting where the top cutting plate only covers up to that pencil line. So most of that shadow die will cut, but that right edge will not cut. Now you can either use your scissors to cut along that pencil line above and below the birthday wishes cut, but I'm gonna use my trimmer. So I'm only partially dropping the blade. You can see I dropped it really close to where the die cutting start. I'll finish it with the scissors. Then for the bottom portion here, it's a small cut line. I'll just cut it with my scissors. Then I can erase that pencil line. This is a great kind of go-to design that you can do with any background you create and any layering word die set that you may have, or even a stamp sentiment with a coordinating die. To save time in my video, I finished this off screen. You can see I used the birthday wishes with blue glitter paper and added that right into our partial die cut piece. I also did a strip of that blue glitter paper along the left edge of that white strip going down the side of the card. And then I used silver glitter paper with some star dies to create little accents to scatter around it since it's a birthday card. You could even put some stars on the inside of the card too. So this just shows another card design you can do using these techniques. Okay, let's do another one. This one has a bold look to it. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp 3D Drifting Blossoms Embossing Folder. Now again, I used watercolor paper, ran that through my die cut machine, following the instructions for a 3D embossing folder. I sprayed three different colors of mica stain spray and then a lot of water on that so we could get some blending. I gave that some time to dry. Once it was dry, I put it back into the embossing folder and ran it through the die cut machine again. I really like that little bit of yellow at the center. If you wanted to, you could do some ink blending on the edges to make that a bit darker, but blending is a little tough for me right now, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Now on to the raised areas of this. I will use cherry ink. This is from Hero Arts. You really could put any ink you want to on top of here, as long as you heat set it afterwards so that that ink dries and use a fixative spray if you want to. And look at how that little pop of red on the raised areas really defines those flowers in the background. For the partial die cutting on this one, I'm again using this thankful and grateful stamp set and we'll do partial die cutting around the thankful word. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white panel, and I'm just drawing a pencil line at an angle towards the bottom. I'll take the shadow die that will cut out the word thankful and put it over that pencil line, and I'll tape it in place. Then we'll do partial die cutting so that that top cutting plate only covers a little more than half of the thankful. So I'm just lining it up with that pencil line. I'll run that through my die cut machine, and you can see the top portion of the word thankful cut out. I then can cut up to the end of the word thankful on both sides. Since it's a small area, I'll just use my scissors. I can cut straight for this short of an area. Now the rest of that white cardstock, I can save for something else. Now I'll erase that pencil line and stamp thankful into the opening, just lining it up with that die cut, partial die cutting that we've done. And then underneath that, I can stamp an additional sentiment with black ink. Now I glued that on top of our bright red background, which is adhered to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. 
Around that, I added some ombre glitter gemstones from Pink Fresh Studio. They're kind of like half gold and half red, which I felt matched our background perfectly. So you can see there's a lot of shine and a lot of color in the background. We have the interest of the partial die cut border, so I was able to keep this card design very simple. This next card has the only background where I did not use watercolor paper. For the embossing folder background, I used regular white cardstock and I used the 3D Falling Leaves embossing folder. And you can see the beautiful detail you get. Again, this is just regular white cardstock. I will add Tim Holtz mica stain sprays onto this just as we've done several times in this video. This time I put down a lot of yellow first and then I added a couple other colors on top. Now you'll notice that this absorbs into the paper very quickly because this is not watercolor paper, this is regular cardstock. So you're gonna get a more splattered look from this because you get those big droplets that aren't gonna move much when you add water to it. So you can see how you see more of the spray on it when you use regular cardstock instead of watercolor paper. It's just another way to use these sprays and get a different look. So now after that's dry, I'll put it back in the embossing folder, run it through my die cut machine again to just redefine all of that texture. And there we have our background. So you can see there's more of a splattered look on the background. To really make that pattern in the background stand out, I'm applying moss ink from Hero Arts over the raised area. And all of the examples I've done so far, I've used a brayer, but if you don't have one, you can always take your ink pad and just gently rub it across the raised area. Don't push too hard or you'll hit the background. You really just wanna stay on the raised area so you can see those leaves pop out. You'll just give that a little bit of time to dry and then you can move on to the rest of the card. The partial die cut sentiment on this one is towards the top of our card. So I have a white panel here that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Towards the top, I did a pencil line at a diagonal and I have the memory box happy fall die set. I have the shadow die and I'm taping it right on top of that pencil line at the same angle. I will then do partial die cutting and you'll see I put the cutting plate along the bottom of and just lining up with that pencil line. So half of the die is under the plate and half of the die is out of the plate. Only the portion under the plate will cut. I'll run that through our die cut machine. Then I will use my trimmer to cut along that pencil line from the edge to where the die cutting starts and then the same on the opposite side. You could use scissors here, you could use a trimmer, or you could use a straight edge and a craft knife, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I use gold matte cardstock to cut Happy Fall, and I'm gluing that right onto our partial die cut panel, just lining up the word fall with that shadow die cut. I then added that onto our background, which is on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. So here's a look at our completed card. I did add some gold glitter gemstones around the Happy Fall, just to pull your eye there. And on the background, you can see a little more definition of the spray because instead of using watercolor paper, I used regular cardstock. So I encourage you to experiment with sprays on different types of cardstock. But because I put that green ink over the raised areas, you can definitely see the definition of those leaves. Before we go, I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek into the cards that I'll be making in my next video. In that video, I will talk more about partial die cutting and how to use it with different types of dies, just to stretch your supplies and get new looks. So be sure to come back tomorrow. And in the meantime, if you're interested in the supplies that I used on any of today's cards, including these sneak peeks, I will have them linked in my YouTube description below. Now at the end, I will also link to a couple other related videos with similar techniques if you're looking for more inspiration. I really do appreciate the time that you spend with me. I know my videos are long, but I'm hoping that you learned a thing or two. And if you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button so you can catch my future videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.